Admiral Kuznetsov. This aircraft carrier has a strange nickname, Kuzya. This is what poltergeists are called in the Russian periphery. In terms of the number of memes, Kuzya is the undisputed leader among all operating and non-operating aircraft carriers in the world. There are plenty of reasons for ridicule, especially after the epic appearance of Admiral Kuznetsov off the western shores of Europe. The maneuvers of the Russian cruiser were closely followed from the American nuclear submarine Virginia. Although, to spy on an aircraft carrier, you do not need submarines at all, since it makes a lot of smoke while moving. Kuzya. This is the name of this cruiser when they want to downplay its merits. What will the aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov look like after deep modernization? Formally, the U.S. aircraft carriers and Admiral Kuznetsov are ships of the same class, but there is a scientific and technical gap between them of 30 years. Therefore, Kuznetsov is inferior to absolutely all U.S. aircraft carriers. First, the Kuznetsov boiler and turbine power plant is clearly outdated. Recall that after the 60s, the United States built exclusively nuclear aircraft carriers. Therefore, the Russian aircraft carrier cannot achieve the speed indices of the Nimitz-class nuclear cruisers, let alone the ultra-modern aircraft carriers Gerald R. Ford, John F. Kennedy, and Enterprise, which are all of the Ford class. Secondly, the autonomy of the Kuznetsov navigation is only 45 days, and the cruise range at the lowest speed reaches 8,400 miles. For American aircraft carriers, these indicators are considered unlimited because the power plant is based on nuclear reactors. Third, the Kuznetsov Air Group is almost half that of the Ford-class aircraft carriers and 30% less than that of the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. The Russian aircraft carrier differs from its American counterparts in its smaller hangar size. This is a design feature. The size of the hangar was sacrificed to accommodate the granite anti-ship missiles on the Kuznetsov. In addition, due to the rocket launcher in the underdeck space, it turned out to be impossible to extend the bow of the ship, which completely excludes the possibility of carrying heavy aircraft with a long takeoff run. For example, early warning aircraft and deck transporters. The matter is aggravated by the absence of catapults. But is Kuzya so harmless? Admiral Kuznetsov is the only ship of this type in the Russian Navy. The construction of Kuznetsov began at the Black Sea shipyard together with the same type vessel, Varyag. Admiral Kuznetsov managed to leave the shipyard in the last days of the existence of the USSR, and the unfinished Varyag went to Ukraine. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukraine sold the Varyag to the People's Republic of China, which completed construction on its territory. Now the brother of Kuznetsov is in the Chinese fleet under the name Liaoning. The fate of the aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov is also interesting. His adventures began at the design stage. At first, there were numerous name changes. So among American strategists, Kuznetsov received the nickname, the ship with a thousand names. When the aircraft carrier was still just hundreds of volumes of technical documentation, it was called the Soviet Union. By the beginning of construction in 1981, the name was changed to Riga. Let us remind you that now Riga is the capital of independent Latvia. A year and a half later, in November 1982, USSR Secretary General Brezhnev died. To immortalize the name of the generally peaceful leader, the aircraft carrier was renamed Leonid Brezhnev. However, with the beginning of perestroika, honoring deceased Soviet leaders began to be considered bad form. Therefore, the aircraft carrier under construction received a different name, Tbilisi. Note that Tbilisi is the capital of modern Georgia, which was also once part of the USSR and then fought with Russia in 2008. After the collapse of the USSR, all Soviet names became irrelevant. The authorities of the disappearing USSR did not find anything better than to name the cruiser after the admiral who led the Soviet Navy during the time of Joseph Stalin. The cruiser was renamed Heavy Aircraft Carrying Cruiser Admiral of the Fleet of the Soviet Union Kuznetsov. The combat missions of Kuznetsov include 1. Support for amphibious operations 2. Attacks on large surface targets 3. Protection of naval formations from attack by enemy aircraft carriers and submarines To accomplish these tasks, the cruiser can accommodate 28 aircraft and 24 helicopters. 
We're talking about the carrier-based fighter bombers, MiG-29K and MiG-29KUB. The aircraft carrier is also capable of carrying heavy carrier-based fighter bombers, Su-33. The helicopter group can be equipped with Ka-27 anti-submarine helicopters and Ka-29 assault landing helicopters, as well as Ka-52. The Ka-52 Alligator Attack Helicopter is an evolution of the iconic Ka-50 Black Shark Helicopter. According to NATO codification, the Alligator is referred to as Hokum B. This is a reconnaissance and attack helicopter of a new generation, capable of striking armored and non-armored vehicles, enemy manpower, and air targets on the battlefield. Note that the fleet of carrier-based aircraft in Russia is several times larger than the capacity of the aircraft carrier. Therefore, the composition of the air wing changes depending on the tasks. The first combat use of the aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov occurred on November 12, 2016, when the cruiser carrier group began maneuvers off the coast of Syria in the eastern Mediterranean. For the first time in the history of the Russian Navy, Su-33 aircraft flew from Kuznetsov, striking the positions of ISIS and Jabhat al-Nursa terrorists in the Syrian provinces of Idlib and Homs. During the two months of its presence off the coast of Syria, two aircraft were lost, the MiG-29K and the Su-33. The death of the fighters occurred while landing on the deck. But most of the problems of the Admiral Kuznetsov are caused by the unreliability of its propulsion system. The ship is driven by steam turbines, but the whole system, together with eight boilers, is so imperfect that the aircraft carrier is constantly accompanied by the tugboat. After the Syrian campaign, the malfunctions of the cruiser's main power plant were fully manifested. One of the four engines gave off black smoke. Black smoke on such units indicates incorrect fuel combustion. Black smoke is allowed only when starting a cold engine for the first time. Its presence at full speed indicates a serious malfunction. As a result, the power of the entire power plant decreased and instead of the maximum 29 knots, Kuznetsov was able to go no faster than 12 knots. Therefore, Kuznetsov was placed on repair and modernization, which are taking place at the 35th shipyard in Severomorsk. At first, only repairs were planned, but then more serious changes were required. The modernization was decided after a fire that happened right in the repair dock in 2019. As a result, the cost of repairing the aircraft carrier increased from the initial 1.2 billion to However, in Russia, they do not disclose the full cost of modernization and repair work. It is possible that the estimate will be 50% of the price of the new aircraft carrier. However, Russia is still doing modernization, because the construction of a new modern aircraft carrier will take at least 10 years. It was assumed that only one of the four gas turbine units is subject to dismantling and repair, but after a thorough diagnosis, it turned out it was necessary to repair all four units. In addition to new power equipment and a new power plant, the cruiser will change the avionics, completely rebuild the flight deck and the takeoff ramp. Removal of the springboard is unlikely due to the composition of carrier-based aircraft. In order not to lose their qualifications, Russian pilots of carrier-based aviation undergo exercises on takeoff and landing on the deck of an aircraft carrier in the conditions of the ground testing training complex, Nitka, in the Crimea. The deck of the Kuznetsov is completely modeled there. As part of the repair and modernization, Kuznetsov will lose the launchers of the granite missile system. The vacated space is intended for a hangar, the area of which will increase to 15 to 16.5 thousand square feet. Naturally, the cruiser's air group will also increase significantly. Two catapults will be installed on the corner deck of the cruiser. This will also make it possible to use heavy aircraft with a long takeoff run. Most likely, these will be electromagnetic catapults copied from other countries, because Russia does not yet have its own developments. True, steam catapults were developed under the USSR, but Russian engineers are likely to receive old developments. The fact is that steam catapults require a nuclear power plant. In the situation with Kuznetsov, it is possible to use only electromagnetic analogs. Let's continue. Kuznetsov Air Defense will be reinforced with Universal Launchers 3S-14, which are designed to launch cruise missiles. Among the list of the most dangerous are the Zircon hypersonic cruise missiles. 
the ship's new weapon systems will be tied to modern electronic equipment. We are talking about the Combat Information and Control System, BIUS Sigma, which is designed for combat control of the ship and tactical formation. BIUS Sigma integrates onboard radio electronic systems of ships into a single complex. This includes absolutely everything – air defense and aviation control systems, radio communications, means of processing and generating information on the tactical situation. Sigma will greatly increase the survivability of the cruiser and the effectiveness of the entire battle group. The modernization will also affect the crew life support systems. Soviet engineers paid little attention to the comfort of sailors. Therefore, for example, the plumbing system of Admiral Kuznetsov was not designed for low temperatures. Maybe that's why Kuznetsov took part in combat operations mainly in warm regions. Before the modernization, at the moment the cruiser returned to the base, the water in the Kuznetsov plumbing system simply froze in the pipes. In order to avoid a rupture, most of the cabins and plumbing fixtures were simply disconnected from the water supply. Naturally, there is no need to talk about any household comfort in such conditions, especially when you consider that the aircraft carrier's crew is about 1,900 people and the maximum duration of being at sea is 45 days. The conditions on board directly affect the morale of the personnel. The U.S. Navy understands this. This is why American aircraft carriers are, in fact, floating cities with their own infrastructure, from hairdressers to gyms and swimming pools. It is unlikely that such standards will be introduced on board the Kuznetsov.